everybody. This is the weekly news update with me, Larry Lawton. We're going to jump right in and go to the world news. Of course, right on the world news, we have the Russia-Ukraine situation. It is not getting any better. The United States sent 3,000 troops to Europe. They did not send them to Ukraine. A lot of people say, oh, they sent them to Ukraine. No, they sent them to Europe. And it's really a ploy, I think. Um, I'm hoping level heads prevail and there's going to be no invasion and there's going to be no war and there's going to be no loss of life. It's bad enough. This thing is going to be costing everybody a ton of money. Uh, and, and for what? I mean, right now, Russia's still wanting uh, to get an assurance that uh, Ukraine will join NATO. At least that's what they're saying. I think it's up to everybody to do whatever they want. And that's my view on that world uh, news there. Second in the world news, we have an ISIS leader. Haji Abdullah was killed by U.S. Uh, force. Well, he killed himself. They raided a compound of his or a building he was in, a hideaway in Syria, and uh, three helicopters went in. He ended up blowing himself up with a suicide vest, killing his own family and killing many others. Uh, I think 13 were the total number of deaths, and uh, the United States did lose one helicopter. It became disabled. They had to destroy the helicopter on the ground, and uh, that's uh, a, a week, uh, an update on an ISIS leader getting killed. Then we go right to COVID, the big thing that people talk about to this day, and I'm even getting sick of it, but we have to talk. Good news on COVID. COVID cases are 36% down, 24% drop in hospitalizations around the United States, uh, which I think is very well, I mean, that's important. Uh, Pfizer is trying to get another emergency uh, uh, authorization for kids under five. I don't know how I feel about that yet. I don't know what the science would be about immune systems and stuff of that nature and trying to suppress them against something. I don't know. These are just my beliefs. I, I'm going to stick with science. I do believe in science, and I, I'm going to stick with science. I do know the Army has a 97% of all people are vaccinated in the Army, and the others are getting discharged, uh, and they're calling it a, um, a, a threat to their readiness. That's what they're calling it. It is what it is. That's the Army. You join. You got to follow their rules. I, I was a, I'm a retired military man, so I do understand that. Number four, it's Black History Month. Uh, I, it's a crazy to know that during Black History Month, there's over a dozen threats of bombings on uh, uh, black colleges and, and, and black memorials and stuff of that nature. I think that's terrible. Uh, I don't know why we have to have such hate and divisiveness uh, over this. It, it is what it is. It's been for a while. Then you get other people say, well, we need a Hispanic month and we need a Chinese month and we need... Listen, Black History Month has been in there. It's been February and it's been what it is. Why are we making a big deal of this? I don't like anybody threatening anybody else with violence. I think it's wrong. You know, violence doesn't solve anything. Violence begets violence. We know that through our prison system. Uh, violence is just nothing but violence. Violence only begets violence. Let's just remember that, people. Some sad news in the United States under the next thing, school shootings. Man, is this bad. We had a school shooting in, Min in Minnesota, Richfield, Minnesota, Minnesota, which I think was too, uh, it's just terrible. Uh, it, it drives me crazy when I see something like that. You know, two shot, two killed there. Then you got Harrison, Virginia, where two cops were killed. Uh, and they called him the dynamic dude. Got one guy's name was Painter and Jefferson, and a black and white guy. And in fact, Painter, the white guy, was the best man at Jefferson's wedding. So they were friends, so there's no racism here. Uh, I don't know why this person killed him. He was Alexander Campbell. He's a former student. He was banned from that campus in 2017. School shootings again, guys. This is just crazy. At what point is this going to stop? I, I, it, it blows my mind away. It really does. It, it's something that's just... It, it's, I don't know. I don't fucking know. I think people are getting crazier and crazier. Let's go to the next one. Biden, the United States President Joe Biden visited New York City to talk about crime. Since crime is up, shootings around the country are up amazing percentages. Crime around the country, murders are up. 
We need to do so. Now, Joe Biden did say that we have to fund the police. And I'm glad he said that. Because I always believe in funding the police, but using the money the right way. Let's not use the money in the wrong way. Let's use the money in the right way. And I think if you can do that, you will uh, uh, see better results and lower crime rates. And, uh, and I think it's all about leadership at this point. How they spend their money is about leadership. And we have to always remember that. Now, number seven. Joe Rogan with Spotify. Since Neil Young and Joni Mitchell pulled their music this week, uh, Joe, By uh, Joe Rogan did say in a, I guess, a, self, a selfie he did uh, for Instagram or whatever the platforms, uh, that he, ha he wants to be more inclusive with other guests with opposing views. That's the way he does. I am a believer in, you, I, don't, I don't like when these artists put their political views to try to silence another person. You know, he, they're talking about because it's such lies. He, he's spewing lies and he's, he's giving people misinformation. Well, what is misinformation? Uh, who's right? Uh, do I spew misinformation because I get my news and, and, and all my information from multiple sources? Do I do that? I don't believe I do. Uh, and I hope you don't believe I do. I just give you a good man's opinion, and I give it from both ways, and I give it in a level-headed way. But we all have to have opinions, man. We all have assholes, and we all have opinions. Remember that. And I'm a believer in that, in a big way. On to the next one. This is crazy. Muhammad Aziz, who was a, uh, uh, there, there's a show out, and Muhammad Aziz was, uh, his conviction was exonerated. Uh, for killing uh, Malcolm X in 1965, he was convicted in 1965 for killing Muhammad as uh, for killing uh, Malcolm X. Muhammad Aziz was let out of jail for lack of evidence and stuff in 1985, 89, and uh, no, in 1985. And since listen to this though, since 1989, 3,000. People were falsely convicted, have been exonerated. Think of that number I just gave you. 3,000 people were exonerated from false, being falsely convicted. That's a ton of people, man. And you know, there's an old saying, I'd rather see 10 pil guilty people go free than one innocent man spend a day in jail. And I understand that. I don't like what happened here. And, uh, you know, I'm glad his conviction, I'm glad it was totally exonerated now. And he just spoke out for the first time. Just spoke out for term. I give him a lot of credit. Spent all those times. So yes, he is suing, and good for him. He should. On to our next thing. Heh, you're going to love this one, and here's my opinion on it. Jeff Zucker resigns from CNN for having a relationship with one of his top executives. Uh, they're both divorced people. Uh, I don't get this one. You know, I'm nonpartisan in any of this shit. You all know that. The what? The can't, the, he can't have a, he ha, a, a relationship with one of his executives? Why not? They're both single. They're not hiding anything. What are they collaborating on? They work together anyway. So they go home and fuck and they have a relationship. Do you care? I don't get this one. I don't understand why he had to resign. We're not talking about somebody taking advantage of somebody. That's number one. They're both divorced, both executives, both in a relationship. We're not talking about somebody sexually uh, abusing or one of the parties saying, hey, he's forcing himself on me or she's pushing the issue. There's none of that. They just had a relationship. Big deal. Are we pushing people away from relationships? You know, it's gotten to the point where a man can't tell another woman she's gorgeous or a man can't do certain things. It's crazy. It's gotten crazy and we need to fix this. It's wrong. In my opinion, I don't care what network they're on. I have zero bias in networks, you know that. I was just on uh, the Jesse Waters show, and I'm on a lot of different shows from CNN to MSNBC to Fox. Has nothing to do with that. I just don't understand why we're, we're really uh, pushing non-relationships with people who work together. What is this, fucking, you know, the military or something? I, I don't get it. You can't have a relationship with somebody? Uh, I, you know, I guess that's the company policy. Doesn't make me have to like it, but it is what it is. Okay, we had a major, major blast at a fertilizer factory in uh, North Carolina. Listen to this, 6,000 people were evacuated. 6,000 people. The, if you haven't saw this thing, just go look it up. 
these fertilizer factories are amazing what can happen. The, I guess the ammonia nitrate somehow ignites and ba-boom. Serious stuff, serious stuff. Check that out. You know, I always implore everybody when I do something, if you like what I'm doing, do your own research. You know, that's what this show is about, do your own research. Okay, here's one that got caught my attention. In the Arbery case, the McMichaels tried to plead guilty in the federal court so they could go to federal prison. And I think that the judge denied this because he says, no, you can't do that. You're going to go to state prison. Uh, and people are saying, well, he wanted that because the feds are easier. That's not true. See, they got it all wrong. When you get to maximum security prisons and that's where these guys are going, they're going to have it harder. There is no connections like they might have in Georgia. They might have connections in the Georgia system. A guy was a cop in Georgia. So I disagree on this one and all the networks reporting, oh, they did it because they want to go to federal prison because it's easier. Obviously, none of those people went to federal prison. Uh, they had a, pres a prison lockdown this uh, week in Beaumont for killings, Beaumont, Texas. So I disagree with that uh, on that premise on all the other news uh, networks. Uh, so he did reject that, and he's he's gonna. I guess they're gonna pull a jury now if he don't take a plea anyway. Uh, I don't care where he goes. I think it's gonna be sucky. You lose your freedom, and that's what prison is about. But to think that the feds are gonna be easier, I think they're wrong. How's that? I think they're wrong. Let's go to Facebook. Check this out. Facebook stock this week dropped 26%. Its parent company, it's called Meta now, uh, not Facebook, dropped 26%. $250 billion in value it dropped. I, I, I had no idea it was that big of a company, uh, almost a trillion dollar company, uh, but Facebook crashed. That's, that's the numbers I got, and I think that is crazy to think those numbers, but that is uh, what happened there. Let's go to this one just a little bit. We go from there, and we're going to jump into something kind of fun to me. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominees came out, and I'm going to read them to you because I think it's pretty cool. These are the nominees for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Beck, Pat Benatar, loved her, Kate Bush, Devo, Duran Duran, Eminem. I like Eminem. Ivor Maddox, Judas Priest, I remember. Fella Cootie, I have no idea. MC5, Dolly Parton, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You go, girl. Uh, Rage Against the Machine, great. Uh, Lionel Richie, Carly Simon, A Tribe Called Quest, and Dionne Warwick. Those are the nominations for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I think that's pretty cool, everybody. Now we're going to jump into weather. Wow. What weather we are having across the country. You know, I was just going to... Look out the window and tell you the weather here. Uh, the weather here is beautiful. Uh, it's going to probably hit 80 degrees in Florida. I know I probably piss everybody off when I say all this stuff. But I do do it anyway. And I'll tell you what. It's pretty wild out there. Uh, the jackknife trailers, all that kind of stuff you see is just crazy. And I think it's amazing that you see all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know... They're having wind and sleet. Now, again, if you don't think there's something going on with climate change, I didn't say global warming and all the shit that comes out. Climate change. Obviously, there's climate change. We're having much, much more extreme weather conditions. Uh, we're having back-to-back -back massive storms. Uh, I think uh, uh, Massachusetts got 27 inches, over two feet of snow. Think of that. I think it's the most they ever reported in, in a 24-hour uh, period. So they've had a lot of snow. Uh, I was watching that. And it's followed by sleet, rain, freezing weather. And boy, it, it's amazing. So be careful out there. If you're in any one of these places that stuff is going on, please, please be careful. That's real stuff, man. I mean, it's really, really bad stuff. Let's jump into deaths. I go from weather to deaths. We have two main deaths that kind of touched me or I heard about. 30-year-old Shalice Christ, uh, it was a suicide, 30 years old. Uh, she was the 2019 Miss USA, a former USA. She was a lawyer. Uh, she's only 30 years old. She was a correspondent for Extra. And, you know, suicide's real, people. 
I can't lie, I thought about it when I was in prison. Um, so anybody, who's, I think anybody who went through, I went through and didn't say they think about it at least, I, I, I don't get it, I think you're lying. But I'm gonna put up this number right now, we're gonna put it up right here on the screen, it's called the Suicide Prevention Hotline. If you're thinking about anything and you're having a bad day or something, call these people, they do work, and they really work. Uh, sometimes we just need somebody to talk to. It's 800-273-8255. It's 800-273-8255. Come on, get help. Uh, I, I don't wanna see anybody take their life for anything. You know, no matter how bad it gets, believe me, I know, I was down. I was down and I, and I never thought I was gonna get up. And it changes everybody. And if I can do it, so can you. So I want you to remember that. And I think that's very, very important. Uh, the other death is, and this one I remember him so clearly, Howard Hessman. He died at 81 years old. Uh, he was at WKRP in Cincinnati. Remember him? He was uh, Johnny Fever, the DJ in WKRP Cincinnati. Uh, he, 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 in, listen, this is a little note about him. In 1963, he was arrested for selling uh, pot. And he sold, uh, supposedly he sold two ounces to an undercover agent. That's the paperwork. Undercover cop. And, but the cops only put one ounce into evidence you go figure uh but that 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 he said that and uh he lived a hell of a life man he had some really great and notable shows he was on and uh you know he lived till 81 81 years old man he did a great job look at what he played on andy griffin show bob newhart show sanford and son one day at a time the rockford files mary hartman mary hartman soap laverne and shirley that 70s show, House, ER, Boston Legal, CSI. And listen to what makes somebody, I think, uh, uh, is a bigger actor than we realize. He hosted NS uh, SNL three times. He hosted Saturday Night Live three times. That's pretty impressive. I don't care who you are. I think that's really, really impressive to do something like that, in my opinion, anyway. Okay, let's go to a little sports news, guys. First of all... In the NFL, head coach Brian Flores, who was fired this year from Miami, uh, is filed a discrimination lawsuit against the NFL, saying they don't have enough black head coaches. I'm disagreeing with this one. I don't think it's us to say, listen, those people who own those teams want to win. They want to win. I don't get that. The, you had Herman, and then you had a couple before that, and, and, and multiple. Just because there's not one now, why should any NFL team have to do something? Listen, I'm all for it. If the guy is good enough, he's saying he's passed over. Who judges that? The guy who's hiring you. The guy is going to be paying you $5 million, $8 million. He's the one who has to make that choice. Not Larry Lawton. Not some NFL committee. He has to make that choice. If I'm paying my employees, I get to choose who they are. Yes, I'm not going to discriminate because I'm not... A, in the, in the discrimination business, so to speak. And trust me, these people aren't. Is there racism? Anybody who says there isn't is lying. It's inherently there. It's called you know, implicit bias and all. I can go into all of that. But you know what? I'm not buying this lawsuit because you didn't get a job for whatever reason. You didn't get to the playoffs or, or what it was. I don't care if you had a winning season. If you're not in the playoffs, you know what? I'd fire you too. Uh, so I'm disagreeing with you there, uh, uh, Brian Flores, I happen to think you're a good coach. I think you're good for Miami. Uh, but apparently I'm not the one paying your bills, so you were fired. Pretty much in the story there, right? In my opinion, it is. Okay. Tom Brady retired. Holy shit. Think of what I just said. Listen to this. He appeared in 10 Super Bowls, won seven of them. MVP in five Super Bowls. He got the most all-time touchdowns, most all-time passing yards, uh, 19 seasons with the New England Patriots and a couple with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and a title. Uh, in my opinion, he's the GOAT. You all know what GOAT means, greatest of all time. I think he's the GOAT. Uh, I hope he does this. He went 19 seasons with New England, and he can sign a one-day contract to play for the New England Patriots and retire as a New England Patriot. 
just a thought, Tom. You know, I know uh, you didn't mention it in your tweet or your Instagram post, but you know, you were something for New England. I, 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 the first thing I think about whenever I think of New England is Tom Brady. Anything with the Patriots is Tom Brady, period. And I think that says something. Uh, yes, you went to Tampa, Florida team and all that, great stuff. But okay. Continuing on the football note. The Rams squeaked by the 49ers, 20-17 to last week. And Cincinnati upset the Chiefs, 27-24. Well, since I picked these games with the point spreads, and the point spread for the 49ers and Rams, and I picked the Rams, minus three and a half. I lose. Half a point. Should have bought it. I lose. I also had Kansas City Chiefs, minus seven. They lose the game, 27-24. Congratulations, Cincinnati. Uh, I think the Super Bowl is going to be great. I'm glad to see a teams like Cincinnati and the Rams there. Uh, I don't think Cincinnati's ever won a Super Bowl. Uh, I think this is going to be great for football. A lot of people say, oh, it's just a Midwest team. Uh, it should be one of the big coach teams. Bullshit. Midwest, you mean something. And good for you. I now am going to pick on the Super Bowl, even though I'm a terrible picker. In the last two weeks... I lost five out of six in the betting realm. Uh, I'm just terrible at it. I don't know. Don't follow. If you if you didn't follow me, if you followed against Larry, you made a lot of money. Well, don't do it this week. I'm picking for the Super Bowl. The Rams are four and a half point favorites against the Cincinnati Bengals in the Super Bowl. I am picking the Rams in a blowout. I think the Rams got the best defense. And I don't think Cincinnati's prepared for them. I don't think Burroughs is prepared for them. That's my pick. The under and over is 48 and a half. If you ask me which is going to be under and over, I ain't got a fucking clue. That's sports, everybody. Have a great day. Please stay safe. I'll make good choices. And I'll see you next week for the weekly news update.